Welcome back to Tech, Tesla, and Trends. In the last video, uh, you might notice that I uh, have a little bit of passion occasionally where it comes to free speech. Uh, in that regard, Elon and I, and I are on uh, a similar wavelength. I believe very strongly in the ability for people to have conversations with themselves, with, not with themselves per se. <laughs> eh, you know, perhaps you'll learn something when you understand your own mind. I, I guess there is that aspect of it. But beyond that, when you have a conversation with others. Now, how does Elon turn Twitter into a more powerful marketing uh, and advertising partner? Well, that's that was also addressed in his open letter. And I, I really wanted to touch base on that one particular paragraph towards the end. I also, uh, he says, I also very much believe that advertising, when done right, can delight, entertain, and inform you. It can show you a service or a product or medical treatment that you never knew existed, but is right for you. For this to be true, it is essential to show Twitter users advertising that is relevant as possible to their needs. Low relevancy ads are spam. Amen. <laughs> but highly relevant ads our actual content. As I thought about that particular paragraph, I realized one of the things that has annoyed me most in the last five, ten years is how much spam is online. We have so many people seeking to optimize SEO and solve for getting the most pairs of eyeballs onto your content. But the problem is, if your content has nothing to do with that pair of eyeballs, they're annoyed with you. And if at some point in their life they would have been interested in your ad or your product due to their circumstances changing, all that they have in their mind is a negative impression of your company, of your product, because you spammed them in the past. So you're not winning at the very game you're seeking to play. This is where Elon comes in with a bold idea that isn't so bold or new or crazy. In fact, it gets back to the reality of what word of mouth advertising actually is. And remember, who's the best at building a word of mouth advertising campaign? I know of no other than Elon Musk. Take a look at what, what he's done with Tesla and you understand that Tesla doesn't need to have a PR department. It has somebody engaging in content discussions in a relevant and purposeful fashion and engaging in and answering the people with questions that they ask, not with, oh, let's do a focus group and figure out whether or not this particular group or subgroup is able to handle or interested in. Nobody cares. That sort of focus group study is psychobabble in the extreme that causes your advertiser or your advertisees to get annoyed, to be frustrated with you. This is why it is important to build relevant ads. And those focus groups... If you're, not, if you're not having a real conversation, if you're asking dumb surveys online, you'll get dumb answers, which results in low relevancy. That's called spam, as Elon put it. And I agree with him. We have to learn how to build a better world and do so with relevant content. Because let's think about Super Bowl ads you love. Which ones come to mind? I mean, obviously, there's several Coca-Cola ones. The, the Polar Bear, that comes to mind. The I uh, uh, can't remember the name of the football player. Those of you that love sports are probably going, how could you not remember? But the football player offering the little, little kid a Coke. That is another one of those. It's an image. It's an icon. Apple's 1984 ad. Sadly, they've become the very ad that they, they ran. 
uh, they've become the mind numbed and they've become uh, the the group that is needing to have the screen broken. But this is, and it's, you know, that's, that's what happens with companies as they grow. They begin to isolate themselves into their little bubble. They seek, they, they stop seeking to innovate and to disrupt themselves. And this is another one of those areas where, uh, as I've mentioned in many other videos, if you are unfamiliar with Tony Siba, you need to take a look at his videos. This man sees the trends that are occurring and you need to be aware of how phase change is occurring. If you're not innovating, you're dying. That is a reality. And a lot of company, a lot of companies, they can be profitable, but they're dying now. They're, they're failing to wow their people. I mean, truly, outside of a few tiny small tweaks with the latest version of the iPhone, what did you receive? Was it truly, truly the just mind-blowing event? Or was it more hype than delivery? And the same thing goes for your Android phones. There's very little innovation occurring within that industry now because they've become stodgy in that. They've become limited in their thinking. Oh, we can tweak a little bit out this way, a little bit that way. That's fine. But what value are you actually delivering to those of us that are buying your products? You know, one of the things that is really clear to me and has kept me on a, a much lower phone platform is there wasn't any real significant improvement to cause me to upgrade my phone. Yes, there's a little better camera quality. Okay, cool. What else? Is the speed faster? Not really. In fact, in some instances, they're using the exact same processor. So, and in, in other instances, like Samsung and their Note, you know, they remove the expandable hard drive slot, uh, uh, the SD slot. They're not building a relationship with their customers. In fact, when they do that, they alienate their customers because they're trying to have designed obsolescence. Have a conversation with your customer. Know who we are. Understand our needs. That's important. That's what Elon's talking about. You should be able to delight Delight us with what you're providing. Too many companies fail at that very job. That's why, as you look at Tesla, you either love it or hate it. And that's a wonderful thing with advertising. There should not be a, a, perf, you know, a perfect world where everybody loves something. There should be Differences of opinion, that matters. That difference is good for the discussion. There's nothing wrong with people disliking one product or another. That's part of the, part of the game of being a human being. I like certain things. You like different things. That's okay. We can have a conversation. You can explain why you love the iPhone. And I can explain why I rather don't care for Apple. And it's not a big deal. There's nothing evil in this process. Advertising is about helping find the people you want to buy or that want to buy your product. Keep that in mind. You're not trying to convince those that aren't interested. You're looking for those that are wanting to buy your product. They love your product. They're, they would buy your product because that's it, it speaks to them. But you also want to speak to those people and say that it's not going to interest. This isn't for you. It's okay to tell somebody, don't buy my product. I'm not, you're, this isn't going to help you. When you create generic products that are generic ads that say, oh, everybody should buy this and yell that from the rooftops. 
you're not doing your brand any real positive growth. It is very important, and I think this is what Elon's getting at, that you come to a point where you can delight, entertain, and inform. These are important details. And if you can achieve all of those at the exact same time, then you have a great ad that nails the, the, overall, uh, the overall conversation. I, I, I think of that uh, Volkswagen ad in 2011. Too bad they were uh, lying about their diesel. But anyways, that's a different conversation. <laughs> But the ad, nonetheless, was a relevant one with the little boy in Darth Vader costume and then the, the whole the way that it interacts and, and, can, and the parents and, and the dad and that whole thing. It, it drew you in. Go watch it. Take a look at that ad. That was one that, even though I wasn't necessarily a Volkswagen fan, I walked away thinking, hmm, that was a great ad. That was an interesting, and maybe I'll look at a Volkswagen next time. Now, we as a people have to learn to have these conversations. This product's for me. This product isn't for me. And it's okay if I don't like Apple, and you do. I don't, I don't have any issues with you because you do. I use Apple. It's okay. We can dislike products and still have conversations with each other. And I think that is an important part of what Elon's looking for, is to teach people that it's okay to have conversations, real conversations, about your product. When you engage in a natural human conversation about a product, real human beings respond. And that's exactly what advertisers want. They want the real human to come in and buy their product. So if that's your goal, you have to learn to inform, you have to learn to entertain, and you have to learn to delight those customers who will buy your product. The ones who are looking for your product. And how better to do that than to partner with a company that understands these these intimate details about building relationships. I truly believe that uh, Elon will help build something extraordinary with every company that works with him. Obviously, GM is out on that. <laughs> Big surprise that uh, Mary B.S. Barra is uh, out. But that's the way it is. She thought she led. Well, somebody thought she led. Clearly, she hasn't been. But that's another conversation. For now, have a great one, and we'll talk to you later.